Welcome to Go Get Great, the podcast for aspiring entrepreneurs and ambitious small business owners. I'm your host, Brittany, owner of Brittany Miller Socials and mother of three. Go Get Great is all about helping you make life and business work together. You'll learn about the fumbles that helped get me and my guests to where we are today so you don't have to make them. So come join the journey with Go Get Great. So good morning. Running a business is always a huge undertaking. And so is starting a family. I would know I've done it three times now. Well, family, not business, Uh, but doing both simultaneously can feel really exciting, but also very overwhelming. So today I am super excited to have Taryn uh, Fersker. Yeah. Did I get that right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, to have Taryn Frisker, owner of Aubergine and Olive, joining me today to give you some practical information on helping you nourish yourself during pregnancy and your postpartum journey, which is what I need right now. Uh, Taryn is a holistic nutritionist who is passionate about supporting women before, during, and after pregnancy. And she's the founder of her business, Aubergine and Olive Holistic Nutrition, a former diplomat and travel writer, a total foodie, chocolate fiend, and mama to three. So much to relate to here. I'm so looking forward to our conversation. So welcome, Taryn. I'm really excited to be chatting with you today. Hi, thanks so much for having me on. (laughs) Okay. So before we get started, I just, you know, want to open it back up to you. Did I miss anything in your bio that you want to make sure you include? You've got a lot going on. I love your background. Yeah. Thank you. It's been quite an adventure for me. Um, Yeah. As you mentioned, this is a second or like almost even third career for me. So um, big changes in my life recently, um, but super happy um, to be going down the path that I'm on right now. Yeah. Exciting. So I want to dive right in today. I am really passionate about your whole topic in business because I have been pregnant three times now and I'm currently in my third postpartum phase. And, uh, everyone is just a little bit different, you know, just like your kids, each of your pregnancies is a little bit different. And, uh, I so looking forward to getting your insight on how, you know, I can look after myself and so how my followers can too, in all of those different phases. Yeah. The, the funny thing is with pregnancy that like we focus on the nine months it takes to grow a baby and we think that's it, but really pregnancy, the whole journey starts even before you're pregnant and continues them through your pregnancy and can continue like three, six, three, six, nine months, even a year or more past into the, into the postpartum period. So it's really a whole longer journey that you're going through. Yeah. And, you know, I was pretty fortunate that I had some pretty good pregnancies. And, um, before I got pregnant the first time I was actually kind of in the process of trying to learn to take care of myself a little bit better. So I think that that made it a little bit easier. You know, I didn't have any morning sickness. My pregnancies haven't been super difficult, knock on wood. Uh, um, but I know that that's not kind of the case for everyone. So maybe we should start at the beginning and for the women that are hoping to conceive in the next little while, what are your best recommendations to kind of help prepare for that process? So that's definitely the best time to start because, um, imagine your body like a storage room and you have like these containers, right. Of different, that could hold different nutrients. And ideally you want to go into pregnancy with all of those nutrient containers filled up to the top. So you have everything you need, not only to grow that baby, but also to take care of yourself while you're doing it. Right. So before you even start growing the baby and doing anything, the best time, that's the best time to focus on filling up those nutrient stores, getting yourself to the best place you can be so that you can really thrive during pregnancy and really be in like an optimal position to nourish yourself and your baby. Mm -hmm. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so now nourishing yourself looks different for everyone or are there kind of some like general overarching principles? Like I know in public school, they teach you about the food rainbow, (laughs) um, which from my adult experience is a good starting point, but like not the full story sort of situation. (laughs) Yeah. It's a little bit more complex than that. Um, so yes, yes to both of those it's there's general principles and it's also different for everyone, which is why I offer one-on-one consultations in my services because every woman is different and they're, and every woman has mm-hmm. different needs. So it's really specific to the individual. But like I said, at the same time, there are some general principles. Um, so as a holistic nutritionist, I take a holistic perspective, which means I look not just at like diet and nutrition and the food you're eating, 
but I look at more broadly at like mental uh, mental health and well being, um, at m- like moving your body, stress levels, um, spiritual well being, all of that. So, kind of looking at that whole picture um, in the preconception phase is super important. Um, when it comes to the the food side, um, so I know it also sounds about as simplistic as eat the rainbow, but I have a very general, <laughs> simple rule. It's just simply eat real food. So that means, and this is like how my kids and mm. I talk about it, eat food that was made by nature, not made in a factory, right? So when you're not sure if something is real food, you ask yourself, mm-hmm. was this made by nature or was this made in a factory? Um, I mean, there are some like gray areas in between yeah. and nobody's perfect. Nobody's going to be eating like organic kale all the time or something <laughs> like that, right? So the idea is to focus on real food because those are the ones that have a ton of nutrients in them and that are going to give you the things you need and are not just mm-hmm. filler, um, you know, taking up space with like with empty calories and and and, and without the nutrients. Um, so yeah, so the diet part is super important, but mm-hmm. the rest of the picture too. So things like making sure your sleep is good, not just in like quantity. So not sure, not just getting enough sleep, but making sure you're having good quality sleep, making sure that your stress levels are at a manageable level and you have kind of some techniques in your back pocket to pull out. If you do get super stressed, um, make sure you have like a good body movement routine. So you're moving your body on a daily basis and making sure that like things are, are running smoothly, right? Like, you know, if you, if you were to enter your car in a big race or something, you'd want to make sure that like everything was properly tuned up in advance. Right. And in good shape. So you want to make sure that like everything is, is running before you, you go to this big endeavor. Mm, Okay. So for those of you that are looking to have a kid, one of the things she said is make sure you're getting good quality sleep. Take that as your invitation to go out and buy a new mattress, because I found personally that that's been one of the really big things in helping me feel more awake when I get up in the morning is I had like a really low end mattress forever and switching it out to a newer one made a huge difference. And I'm sure that's not a hundred percent what you meant, but that was something that stuck out to me. Um, and the other thing that you said too is that it is a very simple rule and you're right. I think it's it's almost more easy than simple. It's so straightforward, so straightforward. But it's, I feel like in our society, hard to put into practice because we live in a very busy state, constant hustle on the go. And, you know, fast food is like so easy. Like I was out at my daughter's dentist appointment this morning and I was like, I have to go home for a meeting. So I like drove through the drive-thru to get food and I ate a hamburger and French fries. And as I was eating this, I was like, I really don't feel good eating this, but at the same time, I know if I don't eat this now, it's going to be like another three hours before I can eat again. So it's just kind of being aware of those things and, you know, eating a hamburger once in a while for me is not a big deal, but, uh, trying to make a conscious effort to stay away from those, you know, man-made foods like you were talking about is a really big one. Yeah. I think it's just a, a matter of setting priorities and also setting new routines, right? So mm-hmm. if, if your priority is to eat a healthier diet and focus on nutrition, um, then there's motivation to set like new routines into play um, so that you do have food on hand. So if things like that happen, you do have something to grab, but instead of Mm -hmm. like your hamburger and fries, you have something of a little bit more nutrition in it. Right. So it's it's just a matter of like thinking and planning a little bit in advance. Um, And then once you get into the groove of it, it's like second nature. Mm -hmm. It's so true. And it takes a little bit of time to find that groove. Like I know I've been playing around with mine for a while and I used to like meal plan on Sundays. And then I was trying to like do my meal prep on the same day. And it was just too much to do the planning and the shopping and the prepping all in one day. And it never got done. So then I would head into Monday frustrated and with an empty refrigerator still. So I'm trying to shift it so that I do my planning on Friday, my shopping on Saturday, and then my prepping on Sunday so that by the time Monday hits, I'm actually prepared for the week. And that has been like mind blowingly amazing for my nutrition and my eating, you know, aside from today. (laughs) Uh, So kind of things like that too, can make a really big difference. And sometimes it's just, you know, thinking outside the box that honestly never occurred to me to meal plan and shop on a different day. And I don't know why, (laughs) but it's nice to kind of have someone else. Yeah. And that's those what I, I, I do too. Like mm-hmm. I have my one day when I make the plan and the grocery list, I do the shopping on another day. And then I have my prep time at a separate time too, because yeah, otherwise it's like an entire day spent just on groceries. And then you feel like you wasted your whole day. So um, breaking it up into manageable chunks makes it mm-hmm. much more easier to do. 
Absolutely. So do you have any tips for food prep or some of your favorite snacks to keep in the refrigerator? Cause I feel like that's the other big struggle. Everyone's like, all right, so I've got all this healthy food and then it sits in the refrigerator until it goes into the compost bin because you didn't know what to do with it. Yeah. So that's where the planning is really key. Um, if you go to your supermarket and you just like raid the, the produce section and you come home, you're going to open your fridge a couple hours later to look for dinner and there's going to be nothing there to make. Right. So you, you need to have a plan. So that's why I think it's so worthwhile to take just a few minutes to think about like, what are, are you going to eat for the next seven days? So your meals, but also your snacks. And then mm. you have your plan. So then you think, okay, what are the ingredients mm. you need? You write those down in your grocery list. You go to the store, you have your list, you buy your things on your list and you come home and you know what's for dinner that night because it's in your plan and you have the ingredients that you need to make it. Yeah. Um, so when you have a plan, it's a lot, it's really easy to follow when things get busy and overwhelming because you don't have to think, oh my goodness, what's for dinner? Or like, uh, there's not, there's nothing to eat in the house. Mm -hmm. I have, you know, you have everything there ready to go. Um, in terms of like making mm -hmm. things super easy, especially with snacks or things to, to grab. Um, so I recently put out a post on my blog called how to eat more vegetables with tips on how to get more vegetables into your diet, mm -hmm. but also understanding that a lot mm -hmm. of people just don't have time for that kind of thing, right? Vegetables are not their priority. So I wanted to give some really easy, practical things to do. So, so I shared one of the things that I love to do, and this is how with three kids, we get a salad on the table every night in two minutes. Um, and, and then, and we, and we actually wow, eat it okay. on the love table. That. So what I do is when I do my grocery shopping, I buy one of those packs of like the pre-mixed lettuce. So it's, it's washed and prepped and ready to go. Mm -hmm. So, and then when I get home from the grocery shopping, I take yeah. like three minutes to wash and chop my veggies. So I have like my cucumber, carrots, um, peppers, tomatoes, whatever's going in there. That's all like washed, prepped in advance, put in, put in a container mm -hmm. in the fridge. So yep. when it's almost dinner time, even like my kids can do it. You grab a handful of the lettuce mix, you throw in some of your veggies that are already pre prepped, mix them some oil and vinegar together, throw that on. There's mm -hmm. your salad in two minutes, right? So when it takes mm -hmm. two minutes and mm -hmm. very little so thinking to do, it's much easier to get those veggies in you than like, oh, I know I'm supposed to eat some veggies with my dinner. And like, you don't know what you're supposed to do and, and it's going to take forever to get it. So you kind of just let, let it go. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that makes a lot of sense. And like, I know one of the things that sounds super easy, but that I never seem to get around to or make time for is, uh, like ricing cauliflower and using that either as a rice substitute or include it in a rice mixture so that you're still getting some extra veggies in that. It just feels like such a process to like pull out the food processor and, and like actually rice the cauliflower. So I either need to start buying pre-riced cauliflower, or I need to start building that into my Sundays because you know, it, it actually really tastes good. Like I don't mind the taste of rice cauliflower. And I feel like that's another kind of easy way to sneak some of that stuff in there. I even hear some moms say they put it in with like macaroni and cheese for their kids. Like yeah. smart. Yeah. If you take the time, like you said, like on Sundays to, to prep it, mm -hmm. then you have it and you can throw it in anything, but it's, it also depends what your priorities are. So if for you, you like, you like the taste of the mm -hmm. cauliflower rice and you find that's a good way to get it, to get that in, then it's worthwhile for you. Um, for me personally, <laughs> I do not enjoy the process of making it. I find it very tedious. So instead we'll have <laughs> like a, a whole grain, like quinoa with our dinner, and then we'll have some roasted cauliflower on the side. Um, mm. just because that's what works better for my family. So like, it, it really depends on, on your preferences and your priorities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, sorry, I had a question that I wanted to ask you and I don't remember what it is. Let's see if it comes back. Oh, um, so I guess a different question that I have is postpartum versus pregnancy. You know, say that we have to nourish ourselves differently. And I know with pregnancy, it's not eating for two. It's, you know, eating for one with like a couple extra pieces of fruit. But what's the rule of thumb for postpartum? Um. Okay, I just want to go back to what you just said about the not eating for two. Um, so that's something that I completely agree mm -hmm. with. And I think a lot of medical professionals are starting to move away from that because you're not eating for two. You're not doubling doubling your calories. Um, it is only a slight caloric intake, and that's more towards the second and third trimester. But instead, you need to focus mm -hmm. on the quality, right? So that's why I like to talk about nourishing for two, which focuses on quality. So not necessarily how much you're eating, but 
what, what it is that you're eating and making sure you're maximizing the nutrients that you're getting. So like we talked about those like nutrient containers in your body. So making sure those are staying at a good level. So you have enough, not just Mm -hmm. for yourself, but for your baby. Um, when it comes to postpartum, Mm -hmm. so now you've just spent nine months growing that baby. You've just gone through this, like the physically traumatic process of labor and childbirth. Right. Um, and it's kind Mm -hmm. of sad that in our culture, we're expected to like get up and keep on going as if nothing happened. And as if like our pregnancy journey is over. Um, in a lot of other cultures in the world, there's like a traditional rest period of one, two months, even longer, where mm. it's understood that the woman needs time to recover and revitalize before she can just get back up and get and get going again. Um, and so I think that's really something that's, that's mm-hmm. missing. Um, and I think that postpartum, it's really um, a good time to focus on your nutrition, focus on refilling those nutrient stores because chances are that they've gone down a little bit um, during your pregnancy, um, resting, recuperating, um, and like not just focusing on your baby, but focusing on yourself as well so that you don't take months and months to recover um, from in the postpartum period. You have a, a much quicker recovery and you feel better a lot faster um, so that you are able to get up and get going, not in a few days, mm-hmm. But um, in a lot quicker than it would be if you just kind of dragged yourself and pushed yourself through it. Mm. So true. Rest is very important. And um, like I know we're both in in Canada. So I guess we're on the fortunate side where we have options to take, you know, 12 months and 18 month leaves for our our children when we have them. But I know the same cannot be said for the States. And uh, I can't even imagine how difficult that must be for some moms, especially those that have like C-sections because they usually require a longer recovery time. And I think they only have six weeks off work. So I think there's definitely something to be said for our society and our culture, uh, really underestimating and lacking the support needed for women in the postpartum phase. Yep, absolutely. And I think there's a definite connection between the lack of support and the push for women to get back out there so quickly. And the health epidemic that's mm-hmm. happening. I mean, not just in the U S but, but worldwide, um, and not just like physical health, but things like mm-hmm. burnout, right. Um, stress, mental health issues. Yes. Um, I think it's all connected. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, I was not good at resting, uh, physically I have rested very well and I haven't really done a lot of like workouts, quote unquote, since my, my pregnancy. So I'm just over three months postpartum now, but I was back to work like within seven days of giving birth because I didn't qualify for mat leave as an entrepreneur. I hadn't had my business long enough. My partner was taking time off, which was really nice, but now we had slashed his consistent income and with my variable income. I felt so much pressure to be able to provide for my family financially that I was like, okay, well, you know what? I'm physically capable of sitting at a computer. So I guess, you know, here we go, let's get back into it so that, you know, we can keep the house and get the food on the table and all of those things for our family. And, uh, I mean, I, I made it through that phase just so to speak, but it's definitely a challenge and it's very frustrating that I felt that pressure to do that. Um, because, you know, I was still grateful that my partner was home and I got all the baby cuddles and the snuggles and I had the flexibility to do that. So I'm glad that I wasn't in a traditional like nine to five job, so to speak, but it's still unfortunate. And it gives me like little pangs of mom guilt that I wasn't able to be fully focused on him for more time. Yeah. And I, I think that's a really good point um, that it is a challenge that entrepreneurs face um, and it's an extra added pressure. And those of us who were able to have paid periods of maternity leave are very, very fortunate um, because I like I, hearing you speak, I can only imagine that, that how that extra added pressure would have affected you. Um, but that said, um, nourishing yourself postpartum, it's not just about like getting extra sleep and getting extra rest because I mean, that doesn't really happen mm-hmm. when you have a baby anyways, or if you have, you know, other, other kids around. Like for me, by, <laughs> by the time my, my third came around, like mm-hmm. there, there was very little space for me because I was taking care of two young kids and a newborn. Right. Um, I don't even know how work mm-hmm. could have possibly fit yep. in there. And, and I am sure it's very challenging for others who have to work um, <laughs> while doing all of that. Um, but there are other things that, that you can fit in there. So when, like, for example, nutrition, so you're still eating, or I hope that you're still eating. Um, even though you're back at work and, and busy um, with, with a newborn. <laughs> yes. So again, nourishing yourself. So focusing on nutrient dense, 
real food when you are eating, um, making sure you're getting, filling those nutrient stores and getting that back in, um, making sure you're getting quality sleep, trying to find the time to move your body every day, getting enough water, um, things like that are going to help when you find that you have to jump back into, um, in, into life again. Mm -hmm. So for, for those people that don't have the experience that you have, what does nutrient dense food mean? That is what an are some excellent examples? question. Um, so nutrient dense food means <laughs> simply foods that have a lot of vitamins and minerals in it. Um, so foods that like for the, for the amount of calories they have, have an exceptional amount of nutrients in them. Um, so some examples are things like nuts and seeds, um, leafy greens, like spinach, kale, uh, um, Swiss chard, things like that. Um, fruits and vegetables in general really are nutrient dense, um, whole grains, pasture raised meat, um, full fat dairy, seafood. So you get really a lot of bang for your buck when you eat those things versus something like, um, mm -hmm. say a bag of potato chips where you're getting a ton of calories, but you're not, you're not getting much of this in the way of nutrients in that. So kind of the opposite of that. Mm -hmm. And I find too, that my energy levels are directly tied to the nutrient dense food that I'm eating. So on the days that I'm eating more fruits and vegetables, I feel like I have more energy. I'm not really a potato chip person, but I do like my baked goods, like my croissants and things like that. And on the days where I indulge in those a little bit more, my energy levels are a lot lower and I feel a lot more sluggish too, which is harder, you know, when you need energy to chase after little ones and run a business. So your nutrition is tied to a lot of things. Yeah, definitely. And I think that like as business owners, our own health and wellness should really be our number one priority because when you're feeling great, like what you're just saying, when you're eating well and you have that energy, you have the energy to spend on your business and your business thrives. But if your health and wellness is low priority mm -hmm. and you're not, you're not eating well and caring for yourself well, then chances are your business and other aspects of your life are going to suffer as well. So like really directly linked together. And I think it's super important mm -hmm. to make that a priority. Mm -hmm. And I feel like there's a whole cultural shift that needs to happen around that because, um, I don't want to speak for everyone in general, but for those people that I have spoke to and for myself too, I find that it takes a lot more conscious effort to make the time to look after myself, whether it's physically or my emotional health, even sometimes just stopping to take an extra two minutes to make a salad rather than just eating a piece of toast. Um, it feels like we are doing something that goes against, I don't know, I don't want to say nature, but like society, I guess has kind of brought us up to, you know, look after everyone else first, at least for mothers, you know, your kids come first, your kids come first. So when, you know, with children running around, there's always something that you could be doing for your kids. We kind of need to like take a step back. And I think as women be like, yes, our kids come first, but our kids can't come first. If we're not on the list, at least whether we're first or not, we need to be on the list and looking after ourselves. Uh, so can you share a couple of your, um, your go-tos for looking after yourself or helping like manage life and business when it gets crazy? What are some of the things that you do? Um, yeah, I think that's an excellent point that, that you made. Um, sorry, just a second. Okay. Yeah. I think it's an excellent point that, that you made, um, that okay. like excellent. in our culture, we are told to focus on others and put others before our, ourselves. And I think it can be a mistake sometimes. And when it comes to our kids, I mean, we all love our kids and want to do what's best for our kids. Um, and so if we take the perspective, like similar yeah. to what I was saying about in our business, um, that if, if you are well taken care of and you are thriving, your kids are going to thrive. And if you're struggling, then mm -hmm. your, your kids are going to feel that as well. So thinking about it, like you got to fill your cup before you fill your kid's cup, right? Um, and they go, they're, they're linked together. So taking yeah, care kind of like a lead by example thing. Yeah. But also that, I mean, you need, you need to be well to take care of them. Otherwise maybe you're not going to have the energy you need or the mm -hmm. patience you need. Um, and, and so they're, they're linked mm -hmm. together. So if you think of taking care of yourself as part of taking care of your kids, um, then maybe that kind of justifies it until we have the societal cultural change, um, mm -hmm. where taking care of yourself <laughs> actually does become a priority. I was just going to say, hopefully that is a societal shift that we see in our lifetime so that our children, especially our female children are not dealing with the same struggles that we are. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, so in terms of tips of, or tricks and things that 
I do to take care of myself. Um, this is something that I've really had to make a conscious effort to do um, because with three kids and running a business, it's very easy to get lost in all of that. Um, so something that I do is I make sure that I have time for myself every day. Um, so I've kind of carved into our family evening routine, some room for me, which involves time for me to take a mm. bath, um, meditate and read before bed. Um, so that's my time. That's just for me. Everybody oh. else understands that that's mom's time. Um, it helps me to sleep a lot better to have that kind of evening low key time, which then means I'm better rested and then everybody's happier oh. when I'm better rested. Um, so finding <laughs> that time on a regular basis that becomes like my time um, and having others understand the importance yeah. of giving me that time for myself. I think that that that's really, really helpful. Um, I also find it super important to manage stress and have techniques in my back pocket that I can pull out when I find the stress levels getting high. Um, sometimes, you know, when it comes to stress, it means time is short. So it's not like I can take like a couple hours to go to a yoga class or something. In cases like that, I'll go for a walk around the block and I find that brings my stress levels down. I'll eat something mm -hmm. because sometimes it's not, it's not that I'm stressed, but it's actually that I'm hungry. Um, so I'll grab something quick, like a handful mm. of almonds or like a piece of, a piece of toast with peanut butter or something. Um, just to get my blood sugar up. And I find that sometimes that that helps. Um, like I said, making sure I'm getting enough sleep every day, mm -hmm. um, getting outside, things like that um, help to kind of balance me out and make sure that I'm, I'm taken care of. I love mm -hmm. that you shared that you carve out time in the evening for yourself. Cause I feel like a lot of people that I talk to are like, Oh, I get up two hours before my kids get up and, you know, I do a little laundry and I exercise and I read and like, that's great. But when your kids get up at seven o'clock in the morning and you're up all night feeding your kids, the motivation to get up at 5 a.m. is just not there. Yeah, I totally agree. So for me, um, it means I go to bed a, a, a little bit later, but having like that half hour, 45 minutes, that's mm -hmm. just for me. And like I said, helps me to wind down anyways. I feel like it's going to improve my, the quality of my sleep. So even if the amount decreases, I think it's a, it's a good trade off. Mm -hmm, for sure. So do you have a, a tip to kind of help other women manage motherhood and business? Is there something that you found that works really well for you? Um, yeah, probably a few things that I could think of. Um, it's, it's so, it's so tough because like you said, there is that societal pressure to put others first. And when you're trying to manage a business, um, mm -hmm. then it makes that pressure even, even higher. Um, so one thing that I've started doing recently and, I'm really trying to stick with is I schedule myself a weekend, but not like on a Saturday or Sunday, but I find a time in, in my kind of work schedule that becomes like my weekend. So for me, that's Monday afternoon. So, um, I make sure that like, I don't have clinical hours Monday okay. afternoons and I really try to keep that time empty and that becomes my weekend so that the rest of the week is focused on my business mm. and focused on my family. Um, but I know I have that little bit of downtime. So when things are getting a bit hectic, I know I have that to look forward to. So I think it's important. Like mm -hmm. as, as entrepreneurs, we don't have a nine to five. We don't have evenings and weekends to ourselves, right? Um, so I think that consciously scheduling out non-work time and trying to stick to it really helps to maintain mm -hmm. the work-life balance, which helps with overall health and wellness. Um, so that's something, like I said, trying to implement. Sometimes, you know, it's really, it's very easy to fill that spot because it's an empty slot, right? So sometimes it becomes a bit challenging, but yeah. when I do have a chance to do it, I find it very rewarding. And then when I sit down at my desk on Tuesdays, I feel super refreshed and ready to go. And I'm probably a lot mm -hmm. more productive than I would have been if I hadn't done that. Oh, absolutely. I a hundred percent agree. And that's a great idea because like I try and take weekends off work, but I inevitably end up working. And even if I'm not working, it doesn't necessarily feel relaxing weekends feel very busy you know it's the grocery shopping it's the meal prepping it's the going on like family outings with the kids and like those are all the things that are really important but then it still just feels like there's you know a lot of drain to the battery and not a lot of replenish so I feel like that that's a great idea to take some time away during the week which will be less busy if you're not booking meetings so that's a really great tip thank you for sharing that yeah thank you okay yeah, you're welcome uh so I know that we were chatting before that you have a fantastic resource for listeners and I want to make sure that they hear that from you today. So can you share a little bit more about that? 
Yeah. Um, so one of the, the things that um, I focus on in, in my nutrition practice is providing information to women so that they're empowered to make informed decisions that are best for themselves and, and their babies. Um, so this information providing is something that I really like to focus on. So I, one of the ways I do this is by providing some free resources to women. Um, and something that I've created recently that we, we talked about um, is my new e-guide. Uh, it's called Your Ultimate Guide to Prenatal Vitamins. And it contains tons of information um, mm. that will help women who are taking prenatals um, to choose the one that's best for themselves and their babies. Because I find that there are so many choices when it comes to prenatals and they are not all created equally, uh, sadly. And I think there's not a lot of information for women out there on how to go about choosing one when you, when you look at all these different mm -hmm. options, how do you know which one is the best? So that's why I created this guide um, that's available for free um, and contains, yeah, exactly what you need to know to make sure that you're choosing the best one. And that's available on your website? Yep, that's available on my website. Okay, perfect. So I'll link that in the show notes for anyone that's listening and they want to grab it. I should probably go and take a look at that one too. Um, I guess I have a question about that real quick. I know that we have to wrap up here, but um, do you recommend women take prenatal vitamins while they're postpartum? Um, so I recommend that in general, when it comes to any stage of pregnancy, that the first step women take is consider whether or not they need to take a prenatal. Um, I don't think it's a given that just because you're pregnant, you need to take one. Um, I think with some careful planning mm -hmm. and um, and work on diet and nutrition that you could get everything that you need from food in most cases. Um, so I think it's a choice for women to make. Uh, for those who do cho choose to take it, um, I think it's definitely an option to take one during postpartum, particularly if you find that um, you don't have the time or the energy or the resources to focus on diet and to prioritize nutrition. Because like I said, your, your nutrient stores are going to be depleted. Um, they need to be refilled. So if the best way to do that is through food, but if that's not an option for you, then a prenatal is the next option. Okay, perfect. This is really helpful to know. And it's nice to hear someone else say, you know, you don't necessarily need them if you're eating well. Cause like, that's the first thing you hear, you know, Oh, you've taken a pregnancy test. I think it's literally in the instructions on the pregnancy test. <laughs> oh, if you get a positive result, call your doctor and like find prenatal vitamins. And I was like, okay, let's just overwhelm new moms uh, all at the same time with a whole bunch of things that they've never done before. And like, you're already starting the journey, feeling afraid that you're making the wrong decisions. No, I think that there are, there is a place for a prenatal supplement, but it's not, it's not a, a blanket um, mandatory requirement. Um, and I think that it should be up to women to make the decision for mm -hmm. themselves, whether or not they want to take one. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for being here and sharing your insight with us today. It was lovely having you on. So I will link your website and uh, your Instagram profile in the show notes, but if you wouldn't mind just saying it for anyone that's listening so that they can follow you if they'd like to connect and learn more. Yeah, sure. Um, so my nutrition practice is called Aubergine and Olive and my website is auberginandolive.com and I'm on Instagram at Aubergine and Olive. Amazing. Well, again, thank you so much and uh, we will talk to you. Thank you so much for tuning in to Go Get Great. I hope you found some useful tips and tricks that can help you make life and business work together. If what I said resonates with you, please share it on social media and don't forget to tag at Brittany Miller Socials so that I can celebrate you for taking those first steps towards achieving greatness. Remember, success doesn't happen overnight. It takes dedication, hard work, and a lot of spirit. So don't be afraid to dream big and go after what you want. Keep striving for greatness. You get closer with every step forward, no matter how small they may seem. Until next time, go get great.